Welcome to Mighty Married Moms. Join us at our kitchen table twice a week as the Mighty Married Moms, Debbie, Linda, Wendy, invite spectacular guests to weigh in on staying sexy, vibrant, and healthy, building marriages with soul-satisfying connection, raising happy, healthy, successful kids. Conversations with Mighty Married Moms will bring you closer to the life you really want. Episode 44. Hi everyone, welcome back to Mighty Married Moms, and today we're going to talk about the conversation that we just had with Karen Cundy from Dharmatola.com. She happens to be my sister, but she also helps hundreds of women, guiding them into health and the tool, with the tools of yoga, Ayurveda, aromatherapy, and body work, and it was just a fabulous conversation, really if I may fabulous. say so myself. It was fabulous, <laughs> yeah, it was. absolutely. We did not want to stop talking, we could have gone on. A long Forever. time, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could have her come back again. There's so many things we could talk to Karen about. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, what was a key takeaway for you, Linda? Um, gosh, there were so many. It was a very fascinating, um, certainly a fascinating discussion on uh, Ayurveda philosophies and mm-hmm. um, and how the diet, of course, which we've been talking about on our mm-hmm. podcast a lot about how diet and your Food. mental health mm-hmm. and all that stuff is all interconnected. Right. Um, She's also a, a yogini, I guess, as you, as you would say, uh, and she talked about uh, how starting to take yoga for physical reasons, but it turned out to be much deeper on many levels, and I certainly have found that myself. Um, I've been doing yoga now for a few years, and it started out with sort of, I was feeling aches and pains and feeling like, you know, you get up in the morning and you're, you, know, you sort of have to, as you get older, you have to st- stretch around a little bit more, and... and um, uh, you know, I got a shoulder injury and my hips started bothering me. And um, so it seemed like a good, you know, I thought stretching was, I don't do enough stretching. I think, you know, former athlete, right? I think one of the things about runners and um, is, is you really have to take that time to stretch. So yeah. anyway, but I started as a physical thing and it has become a much deeper and um, it's, it's, it really is a very spiritual experience as mm-hmm. well, as well as an amazing physical training. Mm-hmm. So, so it was nice to hear her say that and connect Ayurveda, um, you know, philosophy with yoga, um, mm-hmm. which I had ever put together. So mm-hmm. I found that uh, very, very fascinating um, how she put that together. And the Ayurveda, um, you know, the the fire, air, uh, yeah. water, earth, um, the principles and, and relating it to people and how um, you can interact with people at work, in your family, um, in your daily lives, if you kind of have an idea what kind of, where they fall. Right. Right. Um, and we've heard of Myers-Briggs, and there's all kinds of personality things, but I thought that that Ayurveda was really fascinating that she, and she's able to help her clients, not just on their digestive issues, but she's talking to them about their work issues and how they're relating to people at work and helping them, you know, with, yeah. with this background. Yes. Just really and motivating amazing. her, but motivating some employees by using things that she... She said, by what you're describing, it sounds like your administrative assistant is, um, you know, an earth, you know, driven person. So try these strategies. And she went back to work. And she said, oh, my goodness. Yeah. What, what you just. Yeah. 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 And I, I was thinking the same thing. The Myers-Briggs. Like there's so many different ways that we have of looking at human beings and trying to help us uh, go uh, proceed down a path that is motivating and helpful and goes along with our personalities. Mm -hmm. Like if we had an introverted child, we would never throw him into the middle of a party and say, go ahead, talk to everybody. You would, you would say, this is not the best way for my kid to be introduced to this group of people. I think if we just had a one-on-one with uncle Mm -hmm. Bob in the corner, that would be great. And you know, slow, you know, like we know how to do it with our kids. Right. And there's different ways of mapping. And so like this Ayurveda, like, well, maybe my child is an earth, you know, has more of an earth sense. And so these are the kind of things I might want to do with my child. Mm -hmm. Or my child loves to study, so I'm going to help him with his books. But my child doesn't like to study, so I'm going to get him to learn, I know, by a hike up Mount Monadnock or something. Right, to get out and get moving. So we we do already do that, but this is just another way of doing it. It was very, very interesting. Right, right. Very interesting. And as I mentioned um, during the episode, my um, primary coach trainer, Magali Pesha, came from this Ayurvedic background. I... Ayurvedic. Ayurvedic, yeah. thank you. Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic yeah. background as well. And so she has taught us to look in our clients to see 
boy, is this person um, a fire, which is kind of, I have a lot of fire in myself. I'm, you know, and as Karen was describing what the fire is, or, or the, what does she say, I'm Pitta. Oh, yeah, we thought of Debbie, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And Debbie was like, oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's me. That's, that's Debbie. Me. That's yeah. her, her primary, yeah. right. for sure. And so the, the thing is, if you know yourself, like as a coach, I know what, how I, how I operate. And if I figure out what my client is, oh, my client is an earth, that means that they're stable, they're steady, they're grounded. That What that means for me as a coach is that they move a little bit more slowly. Mm. And so I, it's totally fine as long as I know that and I don't have high expectations for my client. And the same thing for, for parents or for couples. Um, if you know that you're a fire and your spouse happens to be an earth, um, you just need to know that they take a little longer to, to warm up to things and right. they'll get there right. eventually. Or maybe they're an heir right. and, and maybe they're, you know, they're thinking about things constantly and moving around and they're not coming back down to earth, <laughs> you know, and that make, it makes it harder for them. And so you need to support them that way, whether that, like I said, whether we're talking about my coaching client or your child or your spouse or your, spouse or your co-worker or your friends, right? yeah, or exactly. your friends, you know. So I, yeah. And so I think it would be good for us now to sort of reiterate. So she talked about the sure. Vata, white, which, which is air, and, and a little bit of ether. Um, and there's the Pitta, which is fire, or, or air and ether. Pitta, which is fire and a touch of water. And Kapha, which is earth and water. So air um, and the ether is sort of somebody who's attracted to the shiny things. You've probably heard that, right? Oh, yeah. I'm doing this. And oh, but look at that. You know, Squirrel. The creative. Squirrel. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, exactly. The creative, um, inspired person, you know. Um, has the great ideas but can easily get overwhelmed because they're thinking yeah. here, there, and, yeah. and, 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 and... A lot uh, of movement. A lot of movement, yes. A mm -hmm. lot, a lot of movement. Um, the, the fire uh, is somebody who wants to own, who's going to be the owner of the business. They're a good <laughs> leader. They see things in steps. Mm -hmm. um, they're very organized. And the earth and water, grounded, as Debbie was saying, grounded, stable, dependable. Um, you know, they don't want to be the owner of the company. They want to, you know, Worker they want to, they, they want to, yeah. yeah, know what their job is and they're going to do it and they're going to do yep. it really, really, right. really well. Right. 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 So, and, and kind I, of put a bow on it and go home and do other things. Yeah. So Whereas there's, somebody that's fire is probably 24 seven thinking and wondering and like she said, in the middle of the night, waking up going, what if it doesn't work or how could it be better? Whereas the kapha person sounds like they go to bed. They, <laughs> yeah. How nice for them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, everybody yeah. has all a little aspects, bit of all right? Yeah. Yes. Nobody is just a one. Primary but mover. it was right. it was helpful for me because I would identify myself as more air probably than um, everything else. So air people because we are attracted to the next wonderful idea or the next inspiration or the next um, shiny you thing. Know, shiny <laughs> thing as as they say. Um, it, it does make it easy to get overwhelmed. And I definitely feel that. And I think, um, you know, a lot of women would probably say they feel overwhelmed a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think it, going along that philosophy, if, mm -hmm. even if, if it's not the shiny thing that you're attracted to, it's because we're trying to run the home, we're trying to take care of the kids, we're trying to work a job, we're trying to do yeah. mm -hmm. all these things. And, 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 we're, and that's a lot of movement. Yes. You think about it. It's a lot of movement. And if certainly, if you're more... Uh, kapha, um, that might be extra hard. You might feel extra overwhelmed that that's not the way you like to live, but you have to be because there's so many, the expectations for women, I think, has, has continuously yes. gone up and we're yeah. expected to excel in every aspect of our lives. And I think it's it's very overwhelming. I know it's overwhelming for me and I can get really stuck and just like, I don't know where to go now because mm -hmm. there's so many directions that I feel like I need Could to go Could possibly in. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, totally. I thought, found that really insightful for myself mm -hmm. um, to hear her talk about that. I was like, oh. Yes. And I loved the definition of overwhelm, which is just feeling out of control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is true. I mean, we, we get to a point where we're just like, I, I I don't like you said Linda I, I don't know what to do next I feel out of control nothing not I feel like nothing I'm doing is making a difference in any of these areas right. and you know, let's let's pick a mom who's at home and she's got you know two or three school age kids and they have to get their homework done they need to be at their activities she needs to be um, maybe she's got a, a a meeting of some sort that she's got to go to that's outside of work. You know, maybe it's a PTA meeting, maybe it's a community chest meeting, maybe it's a church meeting, whatever it might be. So she's got her meetings outside of school. 
She's got her work commitments. She's got, oh, by the way, I'm married to somebody. I'm supposed to actually spend time with this guy. You know, and it is. It's, and then you put on top of it, as we were discussing in a recent conversation, Linda, the, the helping your kids start to look for college or make, yeah. or oh make big gosh, decisions right. in life. Overwhelmed. Yeah. 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 So right, right. The, Add that other job. And yeah. all of those things, you do feel like you have no control. Right. You have right. no control. Right. And so that's when the overwhelm comes and comes takes in. over. Right. Yeah. And she was great about saying a remedy for that mm -hmm. I re which I really love mm -hmm. is we all know what is grounding for us mm -hmm. yes. we, you know and to come up with those two or three things and make sure you do one of them a day mm -hmm. five minutes is enough mm -hmm. three hours would be great and so she mentioned you know going to the her, with her horses like mm -hmm. if she has five minutes to just throw some hay in there and smell the manure <laughs> she's good to go yeah she feels good and I was saying that you know when I smell that ocean air but I don't live near the ocean, so what is it that I could do? So when she and she said cup of tea a few times, and I know for me a cup of tea is very grounding. A good one. Mm -hmm. It's a good one for me. Um, but that was really helpful to just say, find the time. And I can't help but recall, I know, I don't know if I've said it on Mighty Married Moms or not. This is uh, Wendy, by the way. But one of the things that I find that when I talk with women friends is women are so good at saying to their children or their sisters or their dear friends, you need to slow down, and I'm asking you, take a bubble bath. Have balance. Yeah, have a balance, or take a bubble bath, or, or have a cup of tea, or go, you know, go be with your horses. We can do that. We can see it so clearly for the people that we love, yeah. but it's so hard to take that advice and do it ourselves. Can what? I... Can Go I tell you? It. Yeah, can I tell you? Karen and I actually had a conversation on that same topic about three days before this. We yep. recorded this, and I jokingly said to her, Boy, it sounds like you're a little overwhelmed. Kind of ironic that we're talking about that on Thursday, right? And she said, I teach the things I need to learn about for myself. Yes. And she said that it just that morning she had walked her dogs. She has three, three big dogs, three German Shepherds, all of whom she's rescued, by, by the way. <laughs> um, and she said she was out walking, and she realized that she was feeling overwhelmed. So she said to herself, if my client came up to me and told me that this was her story, what would I tell her? Exactly. And here we are. We're coaches, ladies. You know, this is what we should do. We should tell yeah. ourselves. And so I, I do try to make, I forget frequently, mm -hmm. but I try to tell myself the things that I would tell my clients as well. Right. And that's, right. So you're a parent. If your kid, as Wendy just said, if your kid comes up to you or your friend comes up to and you and says exhausted they're, and they're exhausted, overwhelmed, what would you tell them? And then tell yourself that and see right. if you can... Uh, and it might not it. be the same prescription. It's like, different for everybody. It would be different for everybody. Sure. But it's like, what is it that, you know, you, whatever we know about our child or our sister or friend, you need a cup of tea. I want you to just take mm -hmm. some time out. Just do the same for ourselves. It's just amazing to me how, how often I need to remind myself of that. And it, I think it's just, it's just really... So we have the wisdom within. We know what to do. It's just applying it to ourselves that we get a little bit muddled yeah. for whatever reason. Which yeah. is why coaches are really important because yeah. they help you to stick to those goals or figure out how to make that bring you back. a priority mm -hmm. in your life, bring cool. you back to balance. I really liked when she talked about the... Um, you know, getting overwhelmed is like the, the tide coming in, right? The yes. waves um, get higher and then they go yeah, out and you rebalance yeah. yourself. And there, life is just a constant process, right? Of mm -hmm. Just like the, the tide, you know, you get overwhelmed and you rebalance and you get overwhelmed because you're not going to ever stop getting overwhelmed. It's right. going to continuously <laughs> happen. It's right. Right. But you don't want it to <laughs> turn into a tsunami. Right. right, you don't want right. it to get so out of like control. Like that, that the tide doesn't go back out again. It right. keeps building and building. It's going to overflow and come up on shore and take care of the beach houses and cause a huge problem. Like right. that was really, I agree. That yeah, was a very helpful very, image. So, which could which could mean turning into chronic illness, or it could be mm -hmm. you know trouble in your relationship, or you know whatever whatever it is. But you don't want to you don't want to do that. So you want to make time to balance. It's really critical to do. And I think women in particular, and we talked about this a little bit. Um, we don't, and we've talked about it with other people yeah. who we've had on our podcast that we don't so give many. ourselves permission to take care of ourselves because we are far too um, concerned about taking care of everybody else. Um, but it is really, really important. And, and Karen touched a little bit on, we didn't go into any detail about um, the practice of meditation mm -hmm. and taking that quiet <laughs> time. And meditation is about knowing, uh, you know, sitting with your mind. It could be just a couple minutes. It doesn't have to be. 20 minutes of, you know, it just has to be a few minutes a day, but you're, you're going to, mind is going to wander and you're going to bring it back to balance and your mind's going to wander and you're going to bring it back to balance. And the practice of doing that is profoundly powerful mm -hmm. um, on everything that you do in your life. So and the busier you are, the more you need it. <laughs> exactly. 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 Yep. You know, if you take time 
to do that and to refocus. You know, it's interesting. My um, my youngest son, uh, you know, has has attention problems at school. Not problems, but he challenges. I, I don't want to say problems. That's a, not a good word because it's not really. He's a smart, creative kid, but he doesn't like to sit. And listen, right. and if he does, his his mind will wander, and he'll start thinking about other things. That's like seventy five percent of all seventy five percent of all yeah. kids, right? And he's a boy. But he had a great teacher in elementary school that knew she knew when Jack would get to that point where you know the day had gone on too long because it's so it's a long day, mm-hmm. and she would let him go outside and run around, and he'd come back in, boom, back to focus, right? right? Like right. wow, like late, you know, <clears throat> totally different, and that whole. A, a, a teacher, thankfully, recognizing that that I'm sure a lot of boys could use that. Yes. You know, I mean, like particularly boys yeah. and girls too. Yeah. But that physical activity is so critical, and yeah. we've taken it away largely. Largely, in our schools. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That my, I have, I have a friend who used to call it getting the beans out. Like get the kids <laughs> out of the house, run around. They need it's to get their true. beans out. I'm not yeah. sure what the beans are. We but, did. <laughs> that's what we did. Kids, yeah. Right. That's been you know kind of taken taken out of education. And he has a friend who went to a, a private school. Um, and they had two recesses. Really? Because they, you know, And I bet they got a lot more done. Yes, a lot more done. And there's been studies, too, um, about how uh, when people have more vacation time, they actually, Mm -hmm. companies get a lot more productivity out of them Mm -hmm. because they're able to have that, you know, instead of this, you only get a week, a year, you know, where... Don't even get me started on time. I know, And the European culture of having a nap, a siesta. Well, and they also have six weeks of vacation a year. Yes. Yes. A minimum. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. So we're... You it's know. such a contrived thing, the 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year. It's, it's just a, like a, an, an industrial age capitalistic contrivance. There, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ashamed. <laughs> well, I would agree with you. Yeah. I would agree with right. you. It's um, just all made up. It it's can, not how human beings are meant to live. It right. all contributes to all of us feeling overwhelmed. Yes. And it, it, it only gets worse and worse as more, more and more stuff. I mean... Our technology makes so many things easy for us on the one hand, and yet at the same time, it just complicates our lives un- immeasurably because we're so much more connected now. We if have I so much more, more opportunity. Time, if I'm in bed one more time this week on my phone looking at interesting things on Facebook or wherever, and it tells me one more time about how bad it is to look at my cell phone before bed, I'm going to scream. <laughs> But right, it's true. It's true. What am I doing to myself? It's so dumb. What are you doing? So dumb. I don't know. Make I gotta it, stop yeah. it. Make I gotta it. leave my cell phone down. That I, you know, I lived, I don't know, a lot of years before without my phone next to my head. But then again, it is. We don't have a landline, so if the kids call, <clears throat> so it's a, it's a tough one. The phone has to be on. Does it? Does it? Well, if you want an emergency call in the middle of the night, say, "Come get me." I just got robbed by true. a truck. That's true. So, so here you go, Wendy. Put put the phone at the far end of the room. Okay. So if somebody calls. You can still pick it up. All right. But you're not tempted to just roll over and pick it up. And pick it up and have that glare in the middle of the night, that blue glare. Mm -hmm. So bad. I don't, I don't, yep. Yeah. I keep my phone away from I think that adds to us feeling overwhelmed. Yeah, in fact, fact, I need a a new um, uh, alarm clock next to my bed for a variety of reasons. And my husband said to me, well, just use your phone. I'm like, I can't. Yeah. I know myself well enough to know that if my phone is next to the side of the bed, I'm going to look at it. Right. And I don't want to look at it. That's smart. That's very smart. So I'm going to get it. But you have a landline. That's why your kids can call if they got run over by the truck. We do, but they don't call on the landline. No. <laughs> I know. Well, if, if we are almost getting ready. We're if there are any emergency, we're going, emergency, we're going, I only remember my house phone. Yeah. So I can't right. tell my mother. Anyway, because, yeah. 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 The, um, back to, yeah. Back, back to, yeah. Being overwhelmed. <laughs> Sorry. Because, no, well, we're, we're almost at the end yeah, of yeah. Our, our time here. So, I don't know. Do you have a takeaway from... Oh, gosh. For, so many. Right? Yeah. So many, yeah. right? The... Thinking of the five things or uh, the three or five things that would, you know, make you feel grounded, Mm -hmm. um, really important. Make that list and then try to make that a a regular part of your life every day. Something, one of those things. And um, modeling that that for our kids is so key. modeling that for our kids. I need some time. You know, mom needs time or whatever. I'm going to go take my walk now. I'm going to have my cup of tea now. Whatever it is that grounds you. If your kids are watching you say, I'm taking time for myself and really trying to. Mm-hmm. Pair down the, the stimulus in my life. That's so helpful. But you frame it by saying, I need to take time for myself so I can be a better mom for you. Right, yeah. So right. I can be a better wife for my husband. Right, right, right. right. And right. and if they learn that skill, how important is that? Totally. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't say I've modeled that very well for my kids, but fortunately they've figured it out for themselves. And <laughs> and they'll say, <laughs> and, you know, our youngest Christian will say, um, I just need I just need some time by myself. I, I've been out too many times this week, and my daughter 
daughter will say the same thing. And she is a super butterfly, you know, social butterfly. She needs people. She thrives on people. But she knows when she needs her downtime. Mm. And um, so fortunately, even they though figured I, it out. they figured it out despite me. Despite you. That's right. <laughs> they watched so. enough of Aunt Karen, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for being with us at Mighty Married Moms. And um, we hope that you've got some great tips out of this. Please share in the comments on our website, MightyMarriedMoms.com, what are your favorite ways of getting grounded what's the one thing you're going to do for at least five minutes every day Mm -hmm. let's hear what it is and um, maybe that will give other people some ideas as well so please share and uh, the last thing is please subscribe on itunes and we would love to love to hear from you and see you soon so thanks for being here with us at mighty merry moms thanks thank you bye Thank you for joining us for this episode of Mighty Married Moms. Tune in twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays to meet fascinating and inspiring guests who will help you create the life you've always wanted. You can find these episodes and special gifts just for you at MightyMarriedMoms.com as well as a link to our Facebook community where we continue the conversation around the kitchen table. Please also help share the love by leaving a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.